carissime e carissimi giovani. When I was young, I didn't know anything about what would happen in my life, nor did I have any specific plans. In fact, it is God who calls us. He is the one who chooses us. Jesus said, it was not you who chose me, but I who chose you. And this is what happened to me. When I was only six or seven, some sisters brought me to church to pray. And I said to Jesus, Jesus, give me your light, give me your love. As if the divine light and love could enter into my heart through my eyes while I was praying. Looking back, I can see that God answered my prayer. I finished high school and wanted to attend a university. I liked to study. There was one thing I really wanted more than anything else, to know God. So I wanted to go to a Catholic university. But because of my family's economic situation, we couldn't afford to, so I was not able to go. I remember being with my mother and crying hopelessly. And all of a sudden, in the depths of my heart, I heard these words, I will be your teacher, and I became completely calm again. Later on, I realized the Holy Spirit had taught me many things, and I understood what those words meant. Then, when I was 19, I went to Loreto, in the center of Italy, to attend a course for Catholic students. In that place, there is a little house, which people believe was the house of the Holy Family of Jesus and Mary and Joseph, and it was brought there during the time of the Crusades. I visited that little house, and going in, I was very moved. I thought to myself, Mary would have walked from here to there, and Joseph would have built walls just like this. The child Jesus would have spoken, and these walls would have echoed with his voice. It was as if Jesus was saying to me, Look, Chiara, small families just like Jesus' family will begin everywhere. Ordinary people, but with Jesus amongst them, because of their love for one another. Jesus had said that where two or three are united in his name, he would be there in their midst. It was the Focolari. And while I was there, I understood that many others will follow me. And that is what happened. Then, a short while later, I was doing an act of love. My younger sisters didn't want to go out and buy some milk. The place was about a mile away and it was very cold. My mother didn't ask me to go. She wanted me to study. But my sisters were cold and said, I'm not going. I picked up the empty bottle and headed out to do an act of love for my mother. And when I was halfway there, something wonderful happened. I stopped right where I was. I had a simple but very clear impression. It was as if heaven had opened up and someone said, Give yourself completely to me. It was God calling me. I didn't know what to do, so I wrote to a priest and I told him what had happened and I asked him what I should do. He gave me permission to immediately give myself to God forever. I will never be able to describe what I felt in my heart on that day. I had married God. I had married God. I could expect everything from him because I had married God. Meanwhile, I had made friends with other young people. I shared everything with them, and they too wanted to follow God in the same way that I did. So they gave their lives to God, and that's how the Focolari was born. Another thing happened during those terrible years of the Second World War. It was 1943. You were not even born yet. During those years, World War II was destroying everything. Something like the wars we see now going on. You've seen what happens during a war. Well, it was the same thing, and almost everyone was leaving the city. One day in May 1944, another bombing took place over Trent, 
and my home was damaged too. It was so bad that we couldn't live there anymore. So my family and I had to leave that night and we stayed in the woods just outside the city. The place was called Gochadoro. We spent the night out in the open and I can remember only two words, stars and tears. Stars because I could see the stars in the sky and tears because I was crying. I was the one who was helping my mother and helping the family because I was working and I gave them my money. But I knew I couldn't leave the city. The movement had begun already and I was crying because my parents would have to leave towards the mountains where they could take shelter away from the bombs with my sisters and I would have to stay in the city. I didn't know what to do. I wasn't totally familiar with all the words of the gospel, but just look how God works. He makes use of everything, and he reminded me of something I had learnt at school, a saying of Virgil, love wins over everything. How, I wondered. I have to leave my family. Can love win even in this? We were a very united family. Can love win in this situation too? Deep inside, my heart was broken. And I replied, yes, love can win over this too. In the morning, we headed back to our home, which had fallen down, but we could still get inside it. I asked my father for his blessing, and he gave it to me. And while the family headed towards the mountains, I went towards the city which had been destroyed. You couldn't believe how terrible it was. I made my way through the ruins to look for my friends. I knew where they lived, and thank God they were all alive. We began to live together in a small flat that someone gave us. It was the first Focolari. We didn't know it then. Because of the war, everything that we had lived for began to disappear. I wanted to study, but I couldn't because the roads were blocked. And another one of my friends, she had a beautiful home, but it had been destroyed. And another one of my friends had a fiancé. He went to the war, but he never came back. So we thought, but what's left? We had learnt something from all this, that everything, everything passes away. But at the same time, I began to ask myself a question. Is there something that no bomb can destroy? Something that we can give our whole selves to? Yes, was the answer. There is. It is God. God who is love. I told my friends this, and we said, yes, Let's make God the ideal of our lives. Could there be a greater ideal than this? So now we had discovered our ideal and the reason for living. And so we asked, now, how do you put this ideal into practice? We understood the answer straight away. We must love in return. If God loves us, we must love in return. But how do you love God? We used to go into the air raid shelters up to 11 times a day and even during the night because the bombs were falling. We could only bring something small and so we brought a small book of the Gospels. We were sure we would find a way to show our love for God and therefore find a way of how to live our ideal. In those shelters made out of rock, we opened up the Gospel. These words were made for everyone to live. They are words that never get old. They are words that can be lived now, 2,000 years later. Those words were so fascinating and we felt a strong push to put them into practice right away. So one day we read, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Your neighbor? Where was our neighbor? Look, she's right there in that old lady who can barely make it to the air raid shelter who could be hit by a bomb. We have to help her by bringing her to the shelter. Our neighbours were also those five children frightened by the war. 
huddled together with their mother. She couldn't carry them all. We had to help her with them and bring them back home as well. Our neighbour was also the sick man left at home who couldn't get to the air raid shelter and who needed medical treatment. We went to visit him and we made sure that he got his medicine. Another time, for example, we read, whatever you did to the least, you did it to me. There were many wounded, people in need of clothing, people who were hungry, orphans. We began to help them all. We saw Jesus in them. It was Jesus. We used to go out with a little book and make a note of all these people we met to help them with whatever they needed. The Gospel says also, ask and it will be given you. Now I'll tell you one thing that happened. It was one of the first times we asked Jesus for something and he gave it to us. One day a poor man came and asked me, could you give me a pair of shoes, size number 12? I thought, where am I going to find, during this war, a pair of shoes for a man, size 12? Then I remembered, ask and you will receive. I went into the church and there was no one there. I knelt down and prayed, Jesus, give me a pair of shoes, size 12, for you in that poor man. As I was leaving the church, a young woman was there at the door. Chiara, could you use this? What is it? I asked. My heart started to beat faster. I opened it. It was a pair of shoes size 12 for a man. Do you see what I mean? From that moment on, up until today, all over the world, similar things have happened. Another day, we read in the Gospel, Give and gifts will be given you. We had some apples in the house. The poor were always coming to our door and we gave them the apples. The same morning, a relative of one of my friends came with a gift. It was a bag of apples. Ah, that's it. Give and gifts will be given to you. More poor came to the door. Please, give us something. Well, we had these apples, and we gave a few to one person and the rest to another. And so before midday, someone arrived with a suitcase full of apples. Give and you will receive. So the gospel was true. Jesus keeps his promises that he made 2,000 years ago. They're true for us today too. Of course, we didn't keep these things to ourselves. We were so happy to have discovered something so wonderful that we told all our friends and our relatives. I used to write letters to my relatives all of my relatives and all my friends. And we wrote and we talked about it and we said, look, if the apostles once cried out, Christ is risen, here we can say, Christ is alive, Christ is alive. So at that time in the shelters, those shelters were not very safe. There were no doors. So if a bomb fell, it would have been the end. Once a bomb fell very close by, and the whole shelter became filled with dust. I said to my friends, we could die at any moment. It would be good to know which one of the words from the gospel is the most important, the most pleasing to Jesus, which one we should live before we die. We found the answer in the gospel. We read those well-known words, I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down your life for your friends. Jesus used the word mine for his commandment. It was his and it was new. So that was it. There were seven or eight of us and we looked at one another and said, I'm ready to give my life for you and I for you and I for you. Each of us was ready to die for the others. It's so important. It's so important. And that's how we started to love one another. So that's how it all began and continued on.